Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to diagnose Hashimoto's thyroiditis. It may sound obvious, but there are so many thyroid patients who don't have a diagnosis even though they have the disease. So it's actually worth spending some time to talk about how you actually diagnose this problem. And remember, you can't count on your doctor to diagnose this because most doctors only order the TSH. They don't actually order additional thyroid lab tests, which are required in order to diagnose Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And even if you don't know you have a diagnosis of Hashimoto's thyroiditis, this video still applies to you because Hashimoto's is the number one cause of low thyroid and hypothyroidism in the United States and other developed countries, whether you realize it or not. And the statistics are pretty profound. There's something like 70 to 90% of all people with low thyroid function have Hashimoto's as the primary cause of their thyroid problem. So we'll jump into that in just a second. If you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs. I'm an internist and I specialize in helping people with thyroid problems, helping people with hormone imbalances, and of course, helping people lose weight. But let's talk about Hashimoto's today. More specifically, we're gonna talk about how to actually diagnose it. Now, there's a couple things that you need to know. The first would be that there are several ways to diagnose Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And not all of them are, well, you don't have to, I'll explain it kind of as we go, but some of the bottom ones you don't necessarily want to do. It's better to use the top um, couple options here and I'll explain that sort of as we go through it here. So the, the first option is lab testing for thyroid antibodies. So if you have the presence of these antibodies in your blood, it is telling your body, or that's an indication to you that your body is attacking itself because you should never have antibodies to a portion of your thyroid gland floating around in your body at any given time. Okay, that is pretty much the hallmark of Hashimoto's thyroiditis because it is an autoimmune disease. Now there are two antibodies that you should be aware of. One is thyroglobulin antibody, AB is the abbreviation for that. And the other is thyroid peroxidase, AB antibody. So there are other thyroid antibodies by the way, but these are the two associated with Hashimoto's thyroiditis. If you have these antibodies elevated in your blood, and by the way, you can check them, insurance covers it, it's not hard to get them. If you have the presence of these antibodies at, in, in an elevated state inside of your blood, it is a strong indication that you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Now notice, I said a strong indication because it is not universally um, accepted that the presence of antibodies equals Hashimoto's thyroiditis in every single case. And I'll give you a very important example. During pregnancy, when the immune system is somewhat suppressed so that your body doesn't actually um, attack and kill the, the child that you're developing, you can actually have an elevation of these antibodies during pregnancy, and that doesn't mean you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. It does mean that you have an increased risk for developing it and that you have an increased risk of developing postpartum thyroiditis, but there are states that occur where you can have elevated thyroid antibodies and not have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, okay? Which brings us to number two, and that is lab testing for thyroid function. If you have, so this is, this is really how I think about it, and I think most doctors are thinking about it in this way, but if you have a positive set of lab tests for thyroid antibodies, and now you have either abnormal thyroid lab tests or I'll say thyroid symptoms, then you can pretty much adequately say with you know a 99.9% .9 degree of certainty that that person has Hashimoto's thyroiditis, okay? So if you are already somebody who has developed low thyroid symptoms, or you know that something like your TSH, um, is abnormal or something like that, your free T3 is low, your free T4 is abnormal, your reverse T3 is high, something like that. If you have abnormal lab tests, plus you have these thyroid antibodies, that is sufficient for you to say you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. But if you just have the presence of these antibodies by itself and you do not have thyroid symptoms at all, there's one of two options. Either one, those antibodies are gonna go away and it was a, you know, a, weird, a weird problem like pregnancy which caused it, or two, you are in early stage Hashimoto's and your body actually hasn't damaged your thyroid sufficiently to cause those symptoms yet. So they're always a problem if you have the presence of these antibodies, but they do not guarantee the diagnosis of Hashimoto's by themselves. You must accompany them with lab testing for thyroid function plus an assessment of how you are feeling. If you have the presence of those antibodies plus you're experiencing things like weight gain, hair loss, um, fatigue, you're having constipation, cold intolerance, you know, all of those symptoms, problems with your fingernails, eyebrow hair loss, et cetera, then that is a very high likelihood that you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And between number one and number two, most patients should be able to know that they do indeed have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So I really am only looking at numbers one and number two for most people. I'd say 95% plus of people, that's supposed to be a nine, this is sufficient. These number one and two um, are sufficient for that diagnosis. 
but there are some people who still need additional tests. So let's talk about that next. Number three is that you can actually look for something or you can actually look at your thyroid under um, or using an ultrasound. So what it does is the ultrasound gives you an idea of the volume of your thyroid gland. It can tell you what it looks like. It can tell you if it has bumps on it, this relative size of the ultra of the um, of your thyroid gland, and so on. And this can be used to diagnose Hashimoto's thyroiditis if these things are not giving you a clear picture. So it may be the case that you have thyroid antibodies, but maybe you don't have really bad thyroid symptoms or or abnormal thyroid lab tests. If you get that ultrasound, it can make it more clear. And it and the the hallmark of diagnosing. Hashimoto's thyroiditis via ultrasound is that you will see inflammation. So if you say anything, if you say, if you see anything in your report of your thyroid ultrasound, which suggests that there is inflammation or a bumpy texture or something like that, or infiltrates or uh, infiltrates of white blood cells, that those all indicate that Hashimoto's is likely. So if you have a positive ultrasound, that is sufficient by itself to diagnose Hashimoto's thyroiditis because you should never have inflammation just in the thyroid gland. And the number one cause of inflammation in the thyroid gland is Hashimoto's. Now, lastly, and I definitely do not recommend this. This is not something that you want to go do, but it is possible. You can get a biopsy and in, and using a biopsy, we literally stick a needle into your throat, into your, well, through your throat, uh, through the skin of your throat, into the thyroid gland, pull out some tissue and look at it underneath a microscope. If you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, it will show white blood cells and infiltrates inside of that thyroid gland tissue, which they should never be there, as I mentioned previously. So you will get a positive diagnosis in that case. But I don't really obviously want you guys to go get a biopsy. It's not necessary because between number one, number two, and number three, you can diagnose 99.9% .9 of all Hashimoto's cases. There's one other thing that I want to point on, which is important to talk about here, and that is this idea of seronegative Hashimoto's thyroiditis. What this refers to is that you can actually have Hashimoto's thyroiditis as evidenced by a biopsy or an ultrasound, and yet you have negative thyroid antibodies. So this number one, um, this number one option that we talked about before, where I said almost everybody has positive antibodies, there are some people who have Hashimoto's, but they have negative thyroid antibodies. So it just makes it a little more confusing. The good news is if you are one of those people, first of all, it's very rare. So something about five, well, I shouldn't say very rare, five to 10, five to 10% of people have this seronegative Hashimoto's. The good news is if you have this, it usually is a less severe form of Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is, you know, doesn't cause as much damage. You tend not to, um, need as much thyroid medication. It tends to be more easily reversible and so on. So if you end up having it and your diagnosis is hard, um, to nail down because you have seronegative Hashimoto's, that ultimately will be a good sign for you. But if you are anyone listening to this, you have a thyroid problem. I want you to go out and make sure that you have at least checked for your thyroid antibodies. The reason this is so important for you as a thyroid patient is because if you know that you have thyroid antibodies and you have a diagnosis of Hashimoto's, you can then do something about it. You can actually then, uh, it actually changes your treatment. So instead of just focusing on the thyroid, you will then want to focus on both the thyroid and your immune function at the same time. Your doctor will probably tell you, it doesn't matter if you have Hashimoto's and it doesn't matter to them, but it does matter to you. The reason your doctor doesn't care is because whether or not you have Hashimoto's doesn't impact how your doctor is going to treat you. They're going to put you on thyroid medication no matter what. So they don't care if you have Hashimoto's, which is why they only ever order the TSH and they don't actually tend to check these uh, thyroid antibodies, thyroid uh, globulin antibody or thyroid peroxidase antibody. But if you know as the patient, and I'm talking to you here, if you know that you have positive thyroid antibodies and um, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, then you can do things in your power to help treat your condition. Things like changing your diet, adjusting your lifestyle, having a whole food based diet, like I talked about previously, taking certain supplements, using things like low dose naltrexone and so on. Those can all effectively and potentially reverse your Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And therefore they are very important to you as a thyroid patient. So don't just trust your doctor in assuming that you don't have Hashimoto's. If they've never told you, you have Hashimoto's, you must at least get these first or look at these first uh, number one and number two things that I've talked about here. So that's all I have for you guys today as it relates to diagnosing Hashimoto's. It does not have to be complicated. It can be very easy, but do watch out for the seronegative Hashimoto's because that can kind of trip some people up. If you have questions about this, or if you're wondering, you know, how you were diagnosed or whether or not you have it, leave a question below. I'll do my best to answer those. And if you haven't already, make sure that you download my free thyroid PDF resources. I have tons of information all designed to help thyroid patients like you feel better and make sure that you have the right diagnosis so you can get the right treatment so you can feel better. So that's all I have for you guys today. And otherwise I'll see you in the next one.